Well, hello and welcome back to Wednesdays in the Word. If this is your first time tuning in with us, my name is Noah Graves, and this summer we have been looking at the topic of unity. And so each week we've looked at a different aspect of unity and how unity can help us in our walk with the Lord and help us uh, as, as the body of Christ. And so this week we are going to be looking at interdenominational unity. And one of the things that came to my mind regarding interdenominational unity was sports. Because oftentimes people will be big fans of sports, maybe one sport in particular, and they love that sport. They love to watch it, they love to cheer on their favorite team, their favorite player. But then sometimes someone who has that favorite player and that favorite team, they'll have a friend or a family member who roots for a different team or roots for a different player. And then that will develop this, this tension and this little bit of hostility between the two because they, they root for different teams and different players. And it leads to disunity between them where they may no longer want to watch that sport together because they know that they root for different teams. And the reason I bring this up is because I wonder sometimes if that happens in the church where we both may love Jesus and want to see him glorified, but there are certain divisions, there are certain differences that we have between different denominations. And it leads to us not wanting to praise, not wanting to worship Jesus together as the body of Christ. And the Apostle Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, and you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? Wow. So, so what, what was going on here? What was going on in the church of Corinth that Paul had to write this? Well, if you look at the historical context, you'll see that there were people in Corinth who were dividing over who they were following. You see, they were all saved by Jesus Christ, but there were different teachers and leaders that they were identifying themselves under. For some, as the, script, as the scripture says, they were identifying themselves as a follower of Paul, or for some others, it was a follower of Apollos. The problem was that they weren't unifying under Jesus, they were unifying under something else other than Jesus, and that led to divisions, and it led to disunity in the church of Corinth. But what was Paul's response? What did Paul say in response to this disunity? Well, in verse 3, he said this, For you are still of the flesh, for while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? You see what Paul does here? When there's disunity, when there's divisions going on in Corinth, Paul calls it out. He doesn't look the other way and think, hey, that's not a big deal. No, Paul calls it out because disunity and divisions are a big deal. Not only does he call it out, but he is serious about it. You see, the scripture says that you are of the flesh and that you are behaving in a human way. This shows that disunity and divisions amongst each other are serious and they are a big deal and they should not be happening amongst us as the body of Christ. So I want to ask us, do we see this happening today? Do we see this happening today in our church and amongst the body of Christ? Or it may not be saying, I follow Paul or I follow Paulus. Maybe it's, hey, I'm of this denomination and you're of that denomination. Or maybe it's, hey, I, I like to listen to this preacher. I agree with this preacher and you agree and you listen to that preacher. Or maybe it's, hey, I worship this way, I listen to this kind of worship music, and you, you do your kind of worship music and your worship style. Do we see those kind of things causing disunity and division amongst us, where we no longer want to unify, we no longer want to worship Jesus together because there are these things that we disagree over? But this begs the question of, of why. why. Why does this happen? Why does this happen in our churches today? I think we need to look at it with two different angles. Because there is one side where there are these core doctrinal beliefs that we cannot, we cannot look past. Some of those might be that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Some of those are that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. That Jesus Christ came to save the world. Those kind of beliefs, those core doctrines, we cannot budge on. But there are some of these other non-core doctrines and different, different beliefs that we might be able to, to look past. For some, some, some examples of those might be different worship music styles or different preaching styles or different sermon lengths or maybe a different Bible translation where we may disagree about those as Christians, but we don't need to divide over those. But how do we fix this? That's the question I think we all want to know the answer to of 
how can we have unity amongst different denominations? How can we look at someone who's of a different denomination and not look someone and not see someone who we have to divide with, but someone who we can unify under and someone who we can worship Jesus with? Well, I think the Apostle Paul tells us exactly, exactly how we can unify in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10, where he says this, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind, in the same judgment. The Apostle Paul says that in the name of Jesus Christ, he wants us to be unified. Not in the name of this denomination or that denomination. He wants us to be united in the name of Jesus. And so we must take this seriously. We must take the word of God seriously when it calls us to be united. It's not just some silly little thing that the scripture says, if you can make it happen, then do it. No, this is a command from God himself. He wants us to be united as the body of Christ. And so we must take that seriously and we must show good judgment as the scripture says. We must show good judgment as to what we should be holding firm to, as to what those core doctrines are that we will not budge on, and what those minor differences that we can budge on. We must, we must remember what Jesus' desire is for us. As his children, as the ones in whom he came to die and to save for, we must remember what his desire is for us. And he says that in John 17, 21, where Jesus says, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. That's what Jesus wants. He doesn't want us to be divided. He doesn't want us to be split and to worship separately and to never come together, but he wants us to be united under him because that's why he came. He came to save us and to bring us into the family of God, not the different families of God, the family of God. And so we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus Christ is our savior. Jesus Christ is our redeemer. He is the one who we love and who we worship and the one whom we await to come back to bring us to him, to spend eternity with him. So may we remember that this week, church, that when you look out and you see your brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are to be united with them, we are to love them, and we are to worship Jesus with them. Because it's when we do this that we'll see unity grow in the body of Christ. Well, thank you for tuning in to Wednesdays in the Word this week. We hope to see you next time.